Hello, so now I'm going to show you how to, well, how I uh, braid a rubber motor. So this is the motor that I used earlier to show you how I tie the knot. You can see that uh, the knot has now been, the ends have been trimmed. I can go shorter than that, but this doesn't really matter too much. Um, so what's going to happen first is I want to put a little bit of lubricant on the motor. Um, as a general rule, uh, we never, ever fly rubber-powered model airplanes with an unlubricated motor. That's sort of a cardinal sin, if you will. Uh, my way of doing it, just because I don't like getting tons of lube uh, all over my hands, although there's basically no way to avoid it when you're handling a rubber motor, unless you wear gloves, and I'm, never, I'm not going to do that. Uh, it's just to get the initial lube mixed in. I'll put it in a little Ziploc baggie. This is my bottle of uh, Sil Slick Lube. You can buy this from FAI Model Supply. You just look them up online. Just a little bit is enough. Just want to kind of get the thinnest little film of lubricant into the motor. So I just massage this in. You know, you really just need to get it more or less uh, started. If half or two-thirds of the motor is covered in lube to start, you're good because by the time you've braided it and wound it a couple of times, um, the lubricant will have distributed itself over the entire motor. Okay, so Trying to mix it up a bit. So this is, yeah, that's pretty decent. So now, take this out. I can do a bit more on my hands because it's not just gonna. There you go. So that the motor still feels sort of dry. It's not soaking in lube, and you don't want it to be soaked in lube. You want it to be kind of on the drier side um, because if you have too much lubricant on there, it'll splatter all over the inside of your fuselage. And you know, with uh, stick and tissue models, that can be detrimental to the longevity of your model. So now, my, of course, my rubber is somewhat tangled, so I'm just disentangling it here. Try to keep it off the ground because uh, I don't want dust sticking to it. Um, so that's, there we go, it's untangled, all right. And so in this case, I this is a motor for my Cessna CR3, so it's going to be eight strands. So all I've done, I just find the two ends of the motor. I try to make it so that the knot ends up somewhere in the middle. Um, so I sort of pull it so that the knot is kind of uh, away from the end of a loop but not too close to the other end. So here, in this case, there's my knot, there's the end of the loop, that's about right. And so I'm now gonna find another end. So now I've got two ends. I'm just going to put them together, match them together, okay? And let everything else fall so that I've got what amounts to uh, four strands or two loops. So basically one single big loop that's been folded in half. Uh, looks like I'm uneven on this end, so you just try to even everything out. And what I'm gonna be doing is uh, doing this on the door. So now what I've done is I've folded that pair of loops in half again, okay? It's not perfectly even at the bottom. I will loop it around the door handle because I live in an apartment. It's the easiest way for me to do this. Uh, otherwise, I do it outside on the stooge if necessary. But if I want to prepare ahead of time, I'll very often just do it on the door handle. Um, I'm going to, so now I've got this as set up as eight strands of rubber. So folded one single big loop or two strands in half to get four strands and then folded that in half again to get eight strands and now what i want to do is braid it okay so i'm going to take my 
two halves here, right? And I'm going to treat this as one side and this is the other side. And I'm going to braid these two sides so that I form a, basically a rubber rope. Okay. So here's my door handle. Just loop that around there. And I kind of move this, slide it back and forth to start to even things out a bit. See if I can get, get everything to hang together. So that looks pretty good. It's all fairly even. Okay. And so my technique for braiding this is now very simple. You can see I've got my two loops. I have one set of loops. Um, so this is four strands here and four strands there. One set of loops around one finger, another set of loops around another finger. Okay. And all I'm going to do is wind these two loops separately. So hopefully you can see this. Hook my winder. And this is not the winder I use actually when I'm flying the model. This is a winder I'm just using here. This is a small winder. I'm just using this to braid it. This is a 10 to 1 winder. I'm going to put 100 turns on each side. Not very scientific. I always just guess. And 100 turns seems to work for me a lot. You know, it's probably a better way to do that. But, you know. It works for me and motors are expendable, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's a hundred turns on that side. I untwist it and fit that one onto my finger. So I put it back on my finger. So that you can see it's been wound. Now I go do the other one. I wind it exactly the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I hook this on hook this one that uh, I put on my finger before back onto the winder. Okay, and now I just let the winder braid the motor up. Take it off the door handle, and you can see we've now got a fully braided motor. It's into a nice even rope, and you can see my knot is more or less at the middle of the the motor okay so that's a braided motor you can see that uh, the end that I had looped around the door handle so the halfway point of the four strand motor uh, is just in this nice neat knot that can't come undone it's it is what it is this one on the other hand hooked on my on my winder right now can come undone so I don't want to to lose that and so this is the place where I usually get hold of my hook crocket hook in this case and let's see if I can do this without messing it up. I try to work this onto, uh, try to separate a couple of strands here. This is usually takes a bit of effort to get this, especially once the motor's been looped. So there we go, I've got two strands. One half of the motor is now available. There we go, hooked it partially through. You can see I've still got to get it through the other set of strands. So I'm going to get my... I usually just squeeze it and try to separate. It's a little bit difficult because these are already not twisted together, but so I've stuck my finger in there. And so I can now pull those two over the hook and I'm sliding my winder out of there and voila! I'm now hooked onto the crocket hook. Okay. And so doing this, basically the crocket hook now holds the ends of the motor that could untwist, right? So I don't want to get this, let this pop off because the whole thing will unravel. All right. Um, and so that is basically how one does a simple braid on an eight strand motor, right? And you could do the same thing basically for any motor. You can do it for uh, four strands, six strands. Um, if you have odd motors, like um, uh, if you have something that's, let's see, uh, you know, 15 strands, something like that, you can set it up so that one has more than the other. So for example, if you have a six strand motor, which has got three loops, uh, I will just braid 
the two loops on one finger and the one loop on the other finger. Okay, I should get back in the picture. Um, and then let that rope together just like this, okay? It doesn't look quite as smooth, but you know, it does the same job. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, more later.